He stole, he embezzled government money. And he stole a million dollars. Ah, what killed him? A wedge of gold, Babylonish garment, one piece of garment. He wasn't even able to wear it and he was hiding it on the ground. He had not even spent the money, had not done anything. And that man lost his life like that. Just the little, little thing. And let me show you something that, you know, is surprising. It surprises me myself. But, you know, I think sometimes when something shocks you, it will shock you out of that little foolishness. Give me a good amen. amen. We're looking at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. I'm reading from verse uh, chapter 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Just a little folly. A little folly. This seems that people say it doesn't matter. I wonder why they talk about these little things. And these little things actually don't matter. And other churches don't talk about it. Other churches just leave us to ourselves and they make us to have the liberty and the freedom to go where we want and do whatever we want. And it's only in the church like this, they talk about these little, little insignificant, inconsequential things. You'll see why we're talking about them. First Samuel chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 8. And he tarried seven days days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed but Samuel came not to Gilgal and the people scattered from him and Saul said bring hither a bond offering to me and peace offering and off and he offered the bond offering and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the bond offering that Samuel came what had happened here is Samuel said, now you have become king. And you're going to have the first battle to fight. And the, your victory in this first battle will determine what will happen for the rest of your reign. And so seven days I'll be with you. It's not the part of the king to offer sacrifice. It's the prophet, the priest that will offer the sacrifice. Seven days I'll come. And Samuel deliberately waited first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day, and they didn't come. But he was nearby, just waiting as a test. And as the seventh day was passing, they said, you are the king. And you have to be a slave, a servant, in submission to a prophet. What's he doing? Who knows where he is? If you don't do something, we're leaving. And then he thought, okay, I need to do something. That's what ruins people. I need to do so. I must do something. Then he offered the sacrifice. The moment he finished offering the sacrifice, Samuel showed up. And it was still the seventh day. And Samuel said, what have you done? I gave you seven days. Look at your time. It's not 12 midnight yet. The seventh day is not over yet. What have you done? Let's see his answer. And he says, and it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul came, went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash, then it said, therefore said, hi, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, I forced myself to do it. I didn't want to do it. My mind was telling me, wait. My mind was telling me, there is virtue in patience. But I forced myself. I just said, let what will happen, happen. I need to do something. And then it says, I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said unto Saul, Thou hast done what? Foolishly. A little folly. This is not a big deal. The man did not steal. This one did not commit adultery. This one, he did not kill or murder. This is just a little thing. He sacrificed. And he didn't sacrifice to an idol. He sacrificed to who? 
the God of Israel. And yet you have done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now will the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. If you had just waited a few minutes, and you didn't have that little folly, your kingdom would have been established forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. See the consequence. That's why we're saying the little folly, the little foxes that the Lord will take everything away from us. We're looking at uh, Second Samuel chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. There was a particular day that David just woke up and David said, hey, what am I going to do today? I just want to know the number in my army. And I want to know all over the nation of Israel, Joab, get up. And I need to have censors taken. And Joab, Joab of all people, if you know Joab, Joab was not a spiritual man. He was like a fleshly, carnal man. And Joab was some, in fact, David said, Oh Lord, these sons of Zeruiah are too hard for me. He didn't know how to deal with Joab. When he was going to die, he gave instruction to Solomon. He said that Joab was a real son in my flesh. I couldn't deal with him. With your wisdom, help me deal with him. And so, but at this particular time, Joab just appeared spiritual and said, My Lord, king, the king, why are you going to do this? To go and count the children of Israel. Don't do this. And David said, you are not in a position to counsel me, are you? Have you written any psalm? Have you sung any psalm? What spirituality do you have? Have you seen the revelation of the Lord? Did you kill a Goliath before your life? What have you done? I told you, go and count the people. And you are counseling me. I don't need counseling. I need action. Go and do what I said. And you have said, all right. You said so. When the consequence comes, you'll bear it. Let's look at Second Samuel chapter 24. Just a little folly. Just a little thing that he did. In Second Samuel chapter 24, we're reading from verse 10. And David's heart smote him. After that, he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly. In that, in that I have done. Now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very, tell me out loud, very foolishly. And you know that because of that little thing, look at the consequence now, in verse 15, so the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel, from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba. Tell me the number. David, we could have avoided that. We, sh we shouldn't have lost those 70,000 people. Just a little statement. Joab, go and count. And the Lord has not told him to go and count. There's nothing wrong in counting. We have a book of numbers, everything numbers from chapter 1. Numbers, numbers, numbers. But in this case, God didn't say go and count. And David just said, this is what I want. My word is final. Go and do it. And he said, I have done very foolishly. Well, I appreciate that confession, but that confession did not stop 70,000 from dying. Sometimes when you read these things in the Bible and you want to be careful in your life that these little, little things do not spoil our very lives. And I pray that God will help us to become wiser so that we will not allow these things to destroy us in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 10. Second Samuel chapter 10. Just a little folly. And the little folly destroys so many people. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died and Anon his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanon, the son of Nahash, 
as his father showed kindness unto me. And David said, and David said to comfort him by the hand of his servant for his father. And David sent servants and came into the land of the children of Ammon. A very simple story. What had happened is David knew the father. The father had died. Now the son was reigning. And without checking off from God, he said, I'm going to send you this young man and tell him I was in good relationship with your daddy. And now that, you know, the man is dead and you are now the king, I just want to, you know, show my uh, condolence and sympathy and everything. That's all. That's all. No, not more than that. Who will condemn such a thing? Who will say we shouldn't go and greet somebody? But David was a king, a king of Israel. And this was the king of another nation. Pray. David, didn't you say that you waited on the Lord? Wait patiently for the Lord. Psalm 27. David wrote that. And go by the preaching that you yourself, you have preached. And live by what you have said. But you didn't. You just said, go and greet him. Just to greet. Look at verse 3. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanon their Lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father? That he has sent comforters unto thee? Has not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy out and to overthrow it? They misunderstood the attitude and the action of David. But who is to blame? David is to blame because he didn't ask God. The little steps we take and the little foolishness we manifest. And then eventually, out of this, what broke out? If you read the whole chapter, the other people said, ah, he wants to find trouble. We have trouble for you. You're looking for war. You'll see war. Just because he said, go and greet that man and tell him I was in good relationship with daddy before he died. And now I want us to normalize the relationship too among us. Look at verse 18. And the Syrians fled before Israel and David slew the men seven hundred chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen and smote Shobak and the captain of their host who died there. Look at thousands of people losing their lives just because go and greet him and tell him I knew your father I want to have relation, the same kind of fellowship with you like I had with your father. This, this telling us that some little little things that we do that will kind of uh, a boomerang and come back on us and then we lose quite a lot. And the Lord is saying, the little foxes, take them away. The little folly, take them away. And uh, now we come to number three, the danger and the prevention of little fire. Here we're familiar with this one. I said we're familiar with this. Little fire. It was when I was very, very young and, uh, you know, we had those days, uh, you know, you have uh, electricity almost everywhere now in almost all over the world. But at that time, when I was young, imagine what happened while, when I was young. You understand? That must be, you know, qu quite a time. And they were using lantern. And, you know, lantern, or some of you have never seen a lantern before. <laughs> you know, that's what we're using. And then we have a room of clothes and everything. And in the night, my father was outside in the moonlight, just, you know, discussing what those so elderly people do. And I wanted to take a piece of clothes. And then I brought uh, this uh, lamp. And then I was looking for just a piece of clothes. And while holding it with one hand and looking this direction, the little fire caught a little clothes there. And then I didn't want to shout because my father might say, why did you do that? And because I didn't want to shout and raise any alarm, I was uh, looking at it like this. See this kind of fire. What did I do now? What is my fault? And I was just looking. I was thinking like that. And daddy was you know, still outside. And I, was, I didn't even run out. Went from one close to another, from one close to another. And then my daddy outside, they saw smoke. And I was still there. You know, if, if something had not happened to take me out of that place, you would not have seen me today preaching. Just that little fire. 
and eventually many clothes burnt there, a lot of things burnt up over there, and it got me out of the place. When my daddy saw that, you know, his child was here alive, he couldn't even say anything to me. We, but we, we lost a lot, just a little fire. And since that time, I understand, and anytime I read little fire, I understand more than you. Praise the Lord. But you know, that little fire can cause real, real trouble. A little fire in the church. A little fire on the ceiling. A little fire in the family. A little fire in the company. In the place where you're working. Just something little. What does that mean? In James chapter 3. James chapter 3. What do you mean from verse 5 and verse 6? Even so, the tongue is a little member. The tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter. A little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So it's the literal, is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. That little tongue is the little fire. And we need to take care of that. Put out the fire and cover it up. What do you think that, you know, God created the mouth and then surrounded it with 32 teeth? And then put the lips on so you can keep the tongue inside most of the time. You know, sometimes when you just keep your mouth shut and you don't say anything, people will think you are very wise because you didn't talk. And then by the time you open your mouth and you pour out some air, then you lose some value. And it's, I thought you was a wise man. I thought she was a beautiful woman, but now that she has spoken, I know she's not the way I thought she was. And you know, nothing worked for me when I was in school at the university. Because uh, when we came in the first year, God had given me some favor, and I just solved some problems like that. And uh, any time the lecturer came to the class, and, you know, he's asking questions, he not even point at me because he'll think I know it. And sometimes I didn't know, but he'll just think I know and then I will not talk. And he'll say you and you and you. By the time he pointed to five or six people, they didn't know. He said, okay, I'll not, you know, ask uh, so and so because, you know, he'll just tell us the answer. But I'm going to give you a chance. And then he'll solve the problem. And by the time he's ending, he'll then call me and say, do you have anything to say? I'll say, just what you have said now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But then because I kept quiet most of the time, you know, they just thought I knew what I didn't know. Uh, but eventually, I now knew what I ought to know. Praise the Lord. And so, it's good to keep that fire under. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, reading from verse 27. Proverbs 16, verse 27. An ungodly man diggeth up evil. In his leaves, there is a burning fire. In his leaves is the tongue, a burning fire. And the Lord is saying, keep it in. Keep the tongue in. In verse 28, a forward man sweeth strive. And he whispers, separateth chief friends. And then it says, a violent man enticeth his neighbor. And leadeth him into the way that is not good. Chapter 26 of Proverbs. Proverbs 26, reading from verse 18. As a madman who casteth fire, brands, and arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor, and saith, I'm not I in sport. You know, the people that joke with lies. And he will say, I was, I was just joking. It was just, just a play. Are you taking that serious? But say lie. And then you say, then you will say, yes, it's a lie, but you know, I didn't really mean it. And then eventually he might even tell you that, after all, don't you find people that told lies in the Bible? Yes, there are people that told lies in the Bible. But did you see the consequences of the lies they told? What consequences? Abraham told a lie. Yes, I know that. Would you like to have the consequence that Abraham had? Because Abraham said, she is my sister. All right, if she is your sister.